Hey guys, what is going on? Uh, today I'm bringing you something a little bit different um, in terms of videos. Uh, yeah, today I'm going to be bringing you a Stoke City transfer window review, um, including players that we haven't signed yet, but we are af we are actively seeking to sign. Um, and just tell you a little bit about them and my thoughts and. I don't know, try to make it funny at the same time, I suppose, um, but still informative on my thoughts of the players. Um, so, yeah, let's get right uh, right at it, I suppose, um, with this video. So, the first person we're going to be looking at is Adam Davis, who has joined on a free from Barnsley. Um, so yeah, he's a pretty good keeper actually, he's a Welsh international, um, he is 27 years of age, he's come from Barnsley, very highly rated by the fans, uh, he was captain there, he has instantly shown his leadership qualities and whatnot, but also um, I believe he was, he kept the most clean sheets in League One last season and made it into the League One team of the season. So, only positive signs coming from him. Um, would imagine if Butland stays, he will be a num the number two. Uh, but who knows, maybe he can f finally be the first keeper to fight his way uh, past Butland as number one. Only time will tell. He's played over 231 games in his career. Um, 103 of them being in... Uh, League One and 81 of those being in the championship so he does have championship experience too um, yeah he's been at Barnsley for pretty much his entire career he was at Everton under 23s for a short while um, but yeah he's, he's been a real quality player for them he stands around about 6 foot 2 6 foot 3 um, so yeah, not a small keeper at all. Um, he's good with the ball at his feet, and he's a good shot stopper in general. Um, so he'll be interesting to see as the f as you know what happens with him. Will he get past Butland, or is Butland still going to leave? As of yet, we do not know. But um, it'll be very interesting to find out what happens from uh, from this point. Next up we have Stephen Ward um, who has played in his career 404 games varying anywhere from the Irish First Division um, all the way up to the Premier League. Uh, in his career he's played for f f five, well four clubs. Um, he's played for Bohemian Football Club Dublin, of course an Irish team. Um, Brighton and Hove, Albion, Burnley and Wolverhampton Wanderers um, where overall he's been considered a pretty you know decent player um, with an interesting nose of course but uh, if he's a decent f footballer we can look past that um, yeah he's play he comes here with vast experience 196 championship games 171 Premier League games uh, he he's um, played for Ireland 50 times, scoring three goals for the national side. Um, he's played in his career. He's played in various positions, uh, varying from left back, striker, cam, central midfielder, defensive midfielder, and left and a left winger. So um, yeah, he's he's quite versatile. So that will always come in handy, of course. Uh, yeah, just in general, he stands six one. He's thirty three years old. Um, a lot of people may not consider him the best player in the world, but uh, one thing that is guaranteed off him by the sounds of it is that he will uh, give everything for the club when he plays. He's only really coming as a backup to James McLean at left back, um, so not somebody I'm expecting to see an awful lot of. Uh, through the course of the season, he's only signed on a one year deal anyway, so it's not as if we're going to be burdened with him if he doesn't turn out to be a good enough play player or professional, which I very highly doubt he'll turn out to be anything. But, but yeah, not really much to say about him, to be honest. He's had a long and 
mostly successful career, really. So, um, yeah, I suppose uh, he's, he's all around a decent signing. Um, not much else to say. Okay, so next up um, on the list of players signed is Liam Lindsay. Uh, from another one from Barnsley, uh, Scottish centre half, stands around about six foot five, so he's a big bloke. Um, yeah, he's a he's a good player. Um, to only twenty three years of age, he's confident with the ball at his feet. Uh, he loves a good progressive pass, um, and he fits into Nathan Jones' favourite <laughs> favourite word. Um, and understands Nathan Jones' favourite word. The process. Um, so yeah. What else is there to say about him? Really, he's played 181 games in his career already, which is very impressive. He's played for Pat in his career. Adrian, sorry if I bo butchered that, na butchered that name. Uh, a lower athletic. Patrick Thistle and Barnsley and of course now he moves on to Stoke City he's played um, 64 games in the Scottish Premiership, f 42 games in the Championship, 41 in League 1 so um, yeah overall he's for a player who's um, not been around for very long and has still got a lot of his career to go he's already played a lot of games he can play centre half and if absolutely needed right back um, so yeah, he's a uh, got that little bit of versatility. That versatil uh, Christ, versatility that um, is needed in a player. Um, yeah, there's not really much else to say about him. All, uh, he's been brought in for two million pounds, and overall, he's a pretty decent player. So um, yeah, I suppose. That the that's all I can say about him for now. Okay, so next up is Tommy Smith uh, from Huddersfield Town. Uh, he arrives here for a fee, I believe it's around about four million pounds. I've heard there's various fees that have been talked about. I'm going to go with four million. He's 27 years old, so he does provide a lot of experience to the club. Um, he he was captain at Huddersfield. He's come. He's come uh, from Huddersfield as a captain. Um, he's signed a three year deal. Uh, he's, in his career, he's played 209 games, um, with 200 of those coming for Huddersfield and nine of those coming for Man City's under 23. As, uh, he's played 157 of those games as a right back, um, 37 as a centre back, two as a right winger, and one as a left back. So, as you can see, he's got versatility as well. 143 games in the Championship, 39 in the Premier League. So he's got that vast experience in the Championship and knows his way around the league. He's a natural leader. Um, he's got a good shot on him, decent cross. So yeah, overall, he looks like he's going to be a good signing. Um, again, I'm, we'll have to see how it unfolds. But hopefully he will turn out to be a good player. So next up we move on to the midfield department after moving out of defence. Then it comes to the man who we hope will be the one linking everything together. Um, Jordan Cousins who has arrived on a free from QPR. Uh, personally I think this is a fantastic sign and then early signs in pre-season show that he is going to be a great sign and as well. Um, he's played over his career again provides vast amounts of experience especially in the championship because he's played every game of his uh, every game of his career pretty much in terms of the league and the championship uh, over his entire career he's played 206 games again a lot of experience for somebody who's 25 yeah 25 um, he's played 124 of those games at central midfield 30 at left mid, 20 at right mid, 12 at defensive midfield, 8 at attacking midfield and 5 at right back. So a lot of experience, a lot of versatility coming from Jordan Cousins. 136 of those games uh, were for Charlton um, and 70 of those games were for QPR. 
He's played under Nathan Jones before in Charlton's under 23s. Um, what else is there? 186 of those career games have been in the championship, but obviously disregarding cup competitions, and whatnot. He played for England uh, at every level up until under 21s. Um, he's five foot nine, um, I believe. Or, yeah, around about five foot nine. Uh, and overall, a decent signing. Very athletic. Uh, doesn't back out of 50 50 challenges. And uh, just looks a, a real asset to the squad. Um, and he look, he's got that little bit of English grit, I suppose you could say. Uh, and yeah, he's, he looks like he's going to be a real quality signing. Uh, and will hold up that midfield very nicely. Now, next up uh, is a signing that is considered by most, most fans, including myself, um, who is considered to be the best signing Stoke have made this window, especially in terms of value for money and quality of player. Um, that man is Nick Powell, uh, former youth player and obviously senior player, but only as a youngster at Crewe. Um, got them promoted, he scored the winning goal to get them promoted at the age of 19, I want to say, 18, 19. Um, so yeah, knows how to get a team out of a division because he did it with Wigan as well. He got Wigan out of the league uh, League One and had a tremendous season. He must have scored um, in that season 15 goals, I think it was. Something ridiculous for, for a cam as well. Um, yeah, he's a real maverick, especially as he's been he's been described as that by Nathan Jones. A real maverick. Um, not like Logan Paul, though. <laughs> um, yeah, a, a real true quality player a talisman um, some of the stuff he does with the with a football is immense um, and actually unbelievable uh, he's already scored this goal against Leicester um, and he's just a real quality player and to get him on a free is a seri serious bit of business by Stoke um, he stands around about six foot, so he's a good height as well. He's a bit like the best way I can describe him, because I've watched him play live now, is like a bit like Eric Cantona. You know, he's he's got all the quality in the world, and he's a fantastic player, um, a, f a fantastic footballer in general. Um, but he's got that bit of nastiness about him, that bit of grit and. You know he's a, he's got a, a nasty a nasty side about him, and that's what you want in your football side, especially from a cam, because you don't get it very often anymore. He's one of a kind, definitely. He's got a lot of experience, played 244 games over his career, only 25 years old. Um, can play anywhere from cam, second striker, striker, left wing, right wing, and centre mid. Um, throughout his career he's played 87 championship games 55 league 2 games 39 league 1 games um, 16 Premier League 2 games 6 Premier League games a few playoff games as well uh, so yeah he's pl he played for England at every youth level um, and just in general is a real quality player and we fought off so many clubs to get him and we're over the moon. Every Stoke fan is over the moon that we've managed to get our hands on him. And if we can keep him fit and avoid that previous in injury record, then you're looking at a serious, seriously good player. Um, so yeah, I think I think we've done really well. It's a real coup to get Nick Powell in on a free. Last but not least, in terms of players we've signed. Um, I'm pretty sure anyway, I'm sorry, comment and tell me if, if I've made a mistake, I, I do apologise if I have, um, is Lee Gregory, um, well what can I say about Lee Gregory, 
he looks like again going to be a real quality player for us. Uh, he stands six foot two. He's a real working class player. Again, another one of Nathan Jones's favourite words. Um, he's yeah, big, strong, powerful, not too slow either. Um, again, vast experience at 30 years old. Um, played 278 games over his career. Um, 238 of those coming from Millwall so you could class him as somewhat of a Millwall legend really and I'm sure a lot of the fans do he scored 76 goals and got 28 assists in his time there in those games as well uh, FC Halifax Town uh, he played 40 games for 31 goals 6 assists um, he's played 126 games in the championship scoring 30 goal of his goal career goals um, got 14 assists League 1 he's played 78 games 35 goals 9 assists got Millwall out of that division in all fairness to him um, played 36 games scored 29 goals and got 6 assists in the National League just to prove how good his goal to game ratio is um, yeah he's just a real quality player, can play striker, left wing or right wing if needed um, so yeah he does provide a lot of quality within the side uh, Sorry about the audio jump, guys. I had to skip clips. This is a record. I'm recording this voiceover after I've recorded these uh, two games. Uh, this second game, by the way, the only difference is um, I uh, put out a few players that have been we've been linked with because we're going on to that in a second. Uh, but yeah, Lee Gregory has taken Jonathan Walters number 19. Uh, obviously, Walters has been gone for a while now, but yeah. Uh, well, Barry, it's technically Barry, you know, but we'll just ignore him ever existing. Um, but yeah, um, sort of as a finally, I think we might have found a replacement for Walters, a real hard working uh, centre forward, which is what Lee Gregory is. He likes to press, he likes to cause defenders issues, he likes to be a pain in the arse to defenders. Um, and just in general, he's a real, again on a free, a real good sign. He scored 13 goals for Millwall last year, um, in a in in that Millwall side that nearly did go down. Um, so yeah, again, it's another good piece of business by Nathan Jones. He's saving us a lot of money by doing what he's doing. Um, but yeah, of course, now I have to talk about the players that I believe made just join the club and I pray they join the club and also players that we've been linked with that I don't want to join the club and I think I will start with them so first up is Martin Skirtle he's, he's I just don't want him at all uh, we are after another centre half on temporary basis after Shawcross unfortunately broke his leg um, in a pre-season friendly against Leicester um, after going to, sl uh, to stop All Brighton from making a cross um, his leg on foot his tibia I believe uh, unfortunately snapped uh, so yeah real unfortunate get well soon Ryan but yeah we're after m uh, well Martin Skirtle's one of the many centre halves that have been thrown around as a potential replacement for Shawcross while he's out injured for around about four to five months um, which isn't too bad for a broken leg I suppose um, but I just don't want Skirtle at all uh, let's put it this way as a quick summary of how I would feel about getting Martin Skirtle uh, I think this best describes it no, God! so yeah uh, I don't want Martin Skirtle at all um, he's just not a good player at all not good news don't want him he's not good enough let's move on uh, so next up on on the list is uh, another center off Cameron Carter Vickers uh, now this is one that I do want definitely 100% want he's a fantastic player um, was fan really impressed me at Swansea last season big strong athletic um, quick can pass a ball 
he's everything that I, that you want out of a centre half. And with Indy leaving as well, it would be nice to get a centre half in on a permanent basis. And he apparently is available on a permanent basis. So if he's not going for a lot of money, if it's like five million, I'd pay it if I was Stoke. If we can get him in on loan though, that's just as good. Um, so then if Indy goes, we've got five centre halves and Shawcross comes back. Um, so yeah, we've got. Uh, a much better play, a much better option than Martin Skirtle there. Um, so I'm hoping it will be Martin. It will no. I'm hoping it won't be Martin Skirtle and it will be somebody like Cameron Carter Vickers or maybe Axel Tunabarze. But I'm not going to go into Axel Tunabarze because we all know how good he is. Um, next up, uh, I want to try and do it in like order of position, I suppose. So, next up is Santiago Ascaciba. Now, if I had to pick one, one player that we've been linked with to 100% happen, this is the one. Santiago Ascaciba. He's a Stuttgart holding midfielder, Argentinian, uh, Diego Maradona tattooed on his on his uh, thigh. Uh, not his thigh, sorry, his car. Um... Yeah, he would be, again, another fantastic signing. This would be the best signing. Well, Barnick Powell, this would be the best signing we made. San Santiago Ascaciba. He's young, tenacious, a bit like Kante, but with a bit more, I don't know, a bit more vulgar to him, I suppose is the word. A bit more aggression. Um, not afraid to go into a challenge. He's only five foot six. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's smaller than Joe Allen. But that doesn't matter if you're good enough, uh, if you're small enough but a good enough player then the, your height doesn't really play a factor, especially considering how tenacious he is. He's very intelligent, um, his brain is the main part of his game, his intelligence, he can read a pass before it's even been made, he's um, constant, he's a really busy body in midfield and that's exactly what you need in that holding midfield in the diamond you want somebody who's busy constantly going at the ball constantly taking little nicks out of players uh, you know just causing issues for uh, for clubs when they're trying to get forward he won't give you a second on the ball if you're coming forward that is a guarantee and that was something that Stoke really struggled with last year we gave players too much time on the ball and that backfired massively for us um, but yeah he he really is a, a quality player um, not sure how much it would cost but uh, it's been rumoured that we're trying to keep it under the radar um, so that other clubs don't come in and snatch him he's previously been linked with teams like PSG just to give you emphasis of how good he truly is um, a, a few people have even said that to go as far as if he moved to a big club he would be considered the best CDM in the world so he would be a really quality signing um, he's got every aspect of his game is flawless in my opinion his, pa his passing as well is another great thing um, and I think, he suit I think he'd really suit the Starmer system and he may be a little bit cheaper as well and a little bit uh, you know a better you know, just a good player in general to have because Stuttgart have just been relegated uh, to Bundesliga 2 so that might sway him to come to Stoke because let's face it, the Championship is a higher level than the Bundesliga 2 in fact I think the Championship is one of the better leagues in the world unpopular opinion maybe but leave your thoughts on that in the comments Um yeah who else? Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys, I've been linked with that many players. I just have to quickly look, but you don't mind. You know, editing problems always, always an issue. Um, so yeah, uh, I suppose the la one last big player that we've been linked with is Dwight Gale. Now. I know I don't have to tell you about Dwight Gale, but I will. Uh, in the championship, he is a marquee signing, as described by Nathan Jones. 
Um, he has a marquee signing. There's no getting around that. He's a fantastic signing if we do get him in. Um, costing wise, that is apparently what's been Stokes' problem with signing him. Um, Newcastle wants around about fifteen million pounds for him. We want to pay around about, I don't know, I don't know how much we want to pay. Probably about, I'd imagine, knowing Stoke, about ten million, uh, maybe less. But yeah, um, he's a, de you know, definitely a good player in the championship. Twenty nine now, I believe, which is amazing to me that he's twenty nine. He seems like he's literally been around forever and should be about thirty four. But no, only 29. I can remember him being 23, to be honest. Um, at Crystal Palace. But yeah, 29 years old somehow. Last season for West Brom was arguably the best striker in the championship. Maybe, maybe Tammy, Abra Tammy Abraham was slightly better, if not just better in general. Um... It's, it's hard to decide between those two. They're both very good players. But uh, Dwight Gale scored 25 goals in the championship last season, including two free kicks. Uh, I believe he scored three times past Oak last season, uh, two in one game. Um, so it would be less of a nuisance for him to be doing that against us with, against us with some other championship side. Um, he's quick. He's agile. He's clinical. Um, yeah, he just in general a very good player. Um, will be an extremely good sign and fits into the system in my opinion because he loves them little balls through the middle. Uh, one on one with the keeper is his dream really. Um, he's always in the right area. He's a good, just a good player in general really. He's a bit like a Michael Owen type player I suppose, not the best footballer in the world but definitely one of the best finishers um, yeah the price tag might put us off but if we can get him on loan with a loan to buy deal maybe that will be the better choice um, Nick Powell him and Nick Powell probably suit up quite well all the strikers that, that we have at the club I believe um, would work together with him you know because I think a phobie definitely works alongside him um, Campbell does because having two quick you can never have uh, really too many problems with having two quick strikers Sam Vokes can, as a target man can knock it onto him um, who else is there uh, I'm missing a name yet. Lee Gregory um, will definitely work with him because Lee Gregory's worked with pretty much everyone we've played him with during pre-season um, and yeah just in general I think uh, he would be a fantastic signing whether it's for 50 million or on loan with a buy whatever it's going to be um, I am hearing a lot that it's going to happen some people don't believe so I, my personal opinion is that it will happen one way or another because I think Stoke will compensate to make sure that it happens because he, he has the difference between staying in the division and going up in my opinion I don't think you will get many better strikers than him in the championship more consistent strikers with consistent numbers in my opinion I, I, yeah I just don't think you get a, better, a much better striker than him you know got Newcastle promoted um, in the 20 I want to say 2015-16 season I hope I'm right about that Sorry if I'm not Newcastle fans or anyone else who might get offended by that. Um, and then nearly got West Brom promoted uh, this season, but was unlucky really to get sent off in the playoff. Um, but yeah, uh, he's definitely an asset in the championship. Um, yeah, he's just... He's just a good player in general. That's that's the best I can describe him as. He's just a good player. He scores a lot of goals in the championship, and he's exactly what Stoke need at the minute, um, in my opinion. Because I still believe we're lack, like Nathan Jones again has said, we are lacking cutting edge uh, in the final third, and Dwight Gale just gives you that. 
he's so you know he just gives you that extra bit you know he doesn't re miss many chances he's very composed and that's what we need at the moment um, anyways now I've got to try and stretch us out another five minutes because uh, this game went on for another five minutes so um, what to talk about really um, in terms of Stoke QPR prediction um, well we won't have all these players by the time that um, it comes around Liam Lindsay's out suspended uh, Peter Atiba and Badu and I aren't back yet from AFCON um, because they're taking their break um, Ryan Shawcross is out with a broken leg uh, so yeah what um, what side would I play Okay, I'll do my prediction on the presumption that it's this side. So I'm going to go, and we don't sign anyone. So I'm going to go Butlin in goal, back four of McLean. Um, I'm going to go, yeah, sorry. Uh, McLean, Collins, Captain Bath, and Tom Edwards. I think that's the best back four we have at the moment. Um unless we sign anyone of course um, then I'm going to say a midfield diamond of Cousins Klukas, Allen and Powell because again without Atibo and I what not that's the best diamond we we have then up front I would probably actually go Gregory and Campbell because personally from watching all the preseason games I thought Gregory and Campbell looked like the best duo we had. Sam Vokes and Afobi didn't do it for me at, Le at Leicester. They just don't work together. I don't know why. I'd, I mean, in all credit to Sam Vokes, yes, he presses, but now pressing's a big part of how Stoke are going to play. He does press, in all fairness to Sam Vokes. He's just not quick enough to cause the defenders problems, you know, and give them no time on the ball. Um... But yeah, uh, and then a phobie. I don't know what it is about a phobie and Vokes. A phobie just doesn't seem to work with Vokes. Um, yeah, so I think Gregory and Campbell definitely would be my striking partnership, start starting partnership uh, on Saturday, uh, which as, at the time of recording is officially, well, it's Thursday uh, midnight, um, August 1st so two days from now um, so yeah uh, that will be my 11 Let, leave down in the comments if you're a Stoke fan what your 11 will be uh, or if just leave a comment in general if you're just championship Premier League fan how you think your side's going to do this year um, and what you thought of your side's transfers say if you're a, for example a Leeds fan um, I think Leeds have had a pretty good window to be fair Halder Costa I think it's going to be an amazing signing on Leeds part. Um, Reading, what do you think of the Charlie Adams signing? If you're a Reading fan, um, in my opinion, you've got a really good player on your hands there. Very underrated player. Um, I'm trying to think of other championship clubs. I haven't really kept up with. We're at Premier League clubs, Sheffield United. You know, you've you've brought your transfer record what four times in one window. Uh, how does that feel? Do you feel like you're spending too much maybe and getting rid of the core of the squad? Same with the Vill with Villa fans. Do you think you're getting um, maybe one too many players in? Um, just let me know, uh, guys, what you think of your club and their business and how you think they'll do this year. Um, yeah, I've got to keep it going for another minute and 12 seconds so I'll tell you what I'll do to stop me rambling on because I'm 100% I'm boring you at this point um, I'm just going to let you live out the rest of this sort of um, what 3 minutes of added time uh, on the game uh, thank you guys for watching I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope it wasn't too boring I tried to add a little bit of humour in there to keep keep it entertaining um, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll speak to you next time.
undoubtedly he was the star man today so often we think of his creative abilities that knack of picking out a pass but today it was all about his finishing a really good couple of goals in this team win